Okay, our participants are starting to trickle in. Hi everyone, welcome. We see you all coming in um, right now. We're just gonna take a couple more um, seconds here to allow more attendees to come in. We're in for a treat today with our panelists and we'll get started here in a few. Thank you all for being here. All right, just a couple more seconds. See if we have anyone else trickle in. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started today um, in the name of time. And just because this topic is just one of the hottest things in sports right now. So we wanna give our panelists um, the most time to speak, but my name is Tracy Allsbrook. I'm the program coordinator here at Hashtag Sports. Um, I want to thank Influencer and Teamworks for being a partner um, in hosting today's webinar. They were also a partner with our NIL event back in July. Um, so I know y'all are in for a treat. Like I said, um, they're pretty much the leader across this space right now. And we're excited as well here at Hashtag because we're big on athlete empowerment. Empowerment is um, one of our pillars here and, and making sure that people really understand the power of the creator economy, as well as what it means to educate fans and consumers around it. So once again, thank you, Mark, Sydney, and Nate for lending your time and your expertise today. I'm gonna go ahead and send it over to you, Mark, to get us started. And you know, please, everyone, ask any questions um, in the chat. We we know you all submitted a question, a few questions before um, today. But without further ado, Mark Jordan, everyone. Thanks, y'all, and and thank everyone for being here. It really means a lot. Um, for those that don't know, my name is Mark Jordan. I am the manager of NIL strategy at Influencer, and it is uh, I am joined by two amazing industry leaders here, uh, Sydney Sims and Nate Wood. They are just some of the best in the industry I've come across. Uh, Nate and I have started working together from from day one when I started at Influencer, and he's been just such a tremendous help and such a tremendous resource to his student athletes. And then Sydney. Sydney, who I followed on Twitter, one of the best follows on Twitter, if you ask me, um, has been working um, very hard at both of her institutions. Now she's at Michigan. Great opportunity to learn from two of the best people out there. So if you guys don't mind, uh, would you all give a brief introduction of your title and a little bit of how your role involves NIL at your institutions? Let's start with you, Sydney. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you for having me on today. I'm really excited. Um, my very fancy formal title is Director of Strategic Communication and um, Director of Communication and Branding, excuse me, uh, for Michigan football. And um, I have been in this role since May. So I'm brand spanking new, really excited before that. Um, I did the same thing at Notre Dame. Um, so that's just a little bit of background about me and um, my title. Go Blue. <laughs> yeah, hi everyone, Nate Wood. Um, my official title is Assistant Athletic Director for Compliance. Um, we're working on an NIL title. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm gonna tell them about Sydney's title because I like that one. So uh, we'll see if we can get that one here. But uh, I've been here at UNC for uh, a little over two years. Uh, before that, uh, I had previously worked at Michigan uh, for about four years. And before that, I was at uh, Southern Cal for another four years. So I've uh, been in this compliance role for over a decade now. Awesome. Nate, how has your role evolved? Um, you used to come from compliance. That's uh, obviously there's a ton of different roles that have a hand in NIL. How has your role evolved starting this past year in preparation for NIL? Yeah, no. So uh, one of the things is I've become a, a somewhat of an expert in marketing and IP, uh, something I didn't expect to uh, in the, my compliance role. Um, so I certainly have expanded, you know, my knowledge in that area. Um, as far as my role itself, um, there's a lot more outreach involved in the NIL space. So outreach to student athletes, um, outreach to coaches, outreach to donors, boosters, alums, uh, third-party businesses. 
Um, so really kind of, you know, collecting all of those thoughts and making sure that we get out that education. From a compliance perspective, it's a little bit of a natural fit. Um, you know, we, we're in the business of communicating all the time with, you know, student athletes and, and family members and coaches and staff. And so um, really in this NIL role, I've just expanded that communication. And instead of just talking about rules and recruiting stuff and phone calls, um, you know, we're, we're, we're educating student athletes and all of those constituent groups um, on NIL and the NIL space and what's available, what's permissible, um, what opportunities are out there. And so uh, really just kind of expanded the ongoing communication of what compliance does. Awesome. Awesome. And, and Sydney, I mean, you've been doing what you've done for years prior before NIL was an acronym. So how has your role evolved as you start building athlete brands and working with them from a communications and branding perspective? I think the bigger thing is that there's more of a spotlight, which I absolutely love on our student athletes and kind of adding on the um, roles of like education, whether it be financial literacy, you know, um, there's more of um, a need for social media in terms of how our student athletes read analytics, um, how to protect themselves when um, in situations that they're being hacked, setting up two-step ver uh, security verification and stuff of the, that nature. So I think there's more of an emphasis, which I really enjoy with our student athletes and preparing them for this NIL world in terms of, you know, social media safety and making sure that they're putting themselves in the best light. So I've always done student athlete branding, but now it's more of a, okay, like what brands are we trying to attract? and whatnot. So I think there's more of an emphasis, which I think is really awesome to the student athletes as well as to my role. Yeah, absolutely. I think that understanding the that it's, it's kind of a two-way street and athlete brand is just as important as the the company's brand. So understanding that what you attract and what um, you're putting your name on someone else's brand as well. So it's important that, you know, it works out for everyone and that everyone's enjoying that. Um, talk a little bit about how your department's prepared for NIL, look to a few months heading before uh, July 1st and, and think about that process and, and talk about anything that you think would be important for this panel or for this, this audience to know. Uh, Nate, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, as far as prep goes, I mean, we started, um, you know, down this road a couple of years ago when, when NIL started gaining steam and California had, you know, um, uh, approve their bill um, was going to be for a couple of years, but you know that's when we started really talking about it. Um, I would say uh, starting uh, about six months before NIL, we started meeting um, every day, and we had an NIL meeting, and we started talking about okay, what does this look like? Um, and at that time, the NCAA had this very complex um, set of rules in place that were going to be implemented, and so we were trying to figure out how how to implement those rules. And then about a week before July first. Uh, we found out that those rules were no longer going to be in place. So then we had to figure out a whole new strategy and, and we had to realize, you know, pull back kind of all of those things that we were talking about and, and kind of re retool it and rethink how NIL was actually going to work in, 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 um, in practice. And so kind of preparing for all different kinds of scenarios. I mean, I'm sure Sydney and everybody else in the country did the same thing is, you know, at, at one time there was four or five different scenarios that could have played out and, uh, you know, we had like a week to prepare really um, for one, any one of those scenarios. So a lot of prep went into it, a lot of different scenarios, a lot of thought theory going through what, you know, what if this, well, what if then, and, and going through those kind of thought process uh, processes. And, and, and I think that was great. Uh, it, it was great experience for us, um, but it prepared us for where we are now because it allowed us to, you know, think, okay, what if this rule wasn't here, then, then how far could you take it? What's the extent of where we could go with it? Um, does this, you know, alumni have an association with this business, does that make a difference? All of those different factors went into it. So kind of playing out, you know, those, those thought games, uh, trying to figure out where the lines were. Um, and, and that went into the whole prep of how we were going to do it, how we were going to educate, you know, once July 1st happened, who we were going to go to first, was it going to be student athletes? Obviously that was the first, you know, place we went for education and communication. Then who's next coaches. Okay. Who's next, you know, chamber of commerce, alums, boosters, donors, um, and, and just trying to figure out that communication cycle and where we were. So that's kind of the, the week leading up to, to July one. That's where we were is okay. We, we know what we have, how are we going to communicate this? What's our plan of action for that? Um, and then since July one, it has been all, and I know that you didn't ask this, but since July one, it's been um, all you know, uh, student athlete focused, um, trying to get them as many opportunities as possible, uh, and and really working toward 
um, you know, providing them all the information, all the things Sydney just talked about, you know, all of the um, amplification of their social media and the branding and the marketing and being able to say, hey, look, here's all these amazing resources um, that we have for you, including, you know, influencer and, and teamworks and, and everything. And, and, and this is what we have for you. And, and that's been exciting. And um, so, yeah, there was a lot of prep work that went into it. Um, about 90% of it got thrown out the door um, on July 1st. So, uh, but we had a role with it. And um, it, again, it was a great experience. And now we, um, I feel we are better prepared because we did that. Absolutely. And what I always loved about your mindset and the mindset at UNC is it was always about what can we do? I think a lot of folks in this, in, in NIL are so hyper-focused on what we can't do, but y'all were really trailblazers and y'all really put together a plan for what can be done and what athletes can benefit from. So I love that about y'all. Sydney, why don't you talk a little bit about, you've had the, the opportunity to kind of go through two preparation periods here. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about what you've learned? Yeah, of course. Um, when I was at Notre Dame in um, the winter and the spring, we met every day multiple times or honestly multiple times throughout the day, um, whether it be Zoom with other vendors, um, with our coaching staff, our players, trying to get um, within people within the community, uh, the community university, trying to get kind of ahead and feel like like what Nathan said, all angles of which NIL will impact, whether it be boosters or coaching or players, our main, our main goal, and I can say it's been at both um, institutions, is making sure that our players are better prepared and they have all the tools to success for success. Um, so <laughs> like both, I can say um, when I went over to Michigan and I um, we have another same NIL committee and where we're touching sponsorship, um, admin, you know, legal, um, business, trying to see how we can better prepare all of our student athletes, making sure our coaches are all on the same page on board with the education portion, because, you know, student athletes, they are touched by so many different people throughout the day. So making sure that we're all aligned with the same mission and same goal. And that's our main thing is making sure we're educating all. So a lot of our stuff that has been put in place, I feel like July 1st kind of, it kind of blew up for everyone. And Aaron was like, oh snap, this is not what we anticipated it to be. So um, making sure that we're educating ourselves and making sure that we're then taking that education and giving it to our student athletes um, at the highest level. So they are being put in situations of success, um, letting them know. And, and, and sometimes it is harsh reality. Some deals aren't the best deals, you know? Um, sometimes you have to have that strong conversation with, hey, like, you're not worth as much as you think you're worth, but we can get you, we can take steps to help build that brand. So um, we're just kind of going with the flow. I hate to say it, but like, you know, we're going with the flow and figuring out as it is evolving and growing, but our main focus is making sure that we have that strong foundation of education for our student athletes here at Michigan. Um, and I'm lucky that I work for a head coach that's really like, empowering our guys to go out there and to brand themselves and put themselves out there. Um, and Coach Harbaugh is very vocal in that. So I'm very fortunate in that regard. Awesome. A lot of great stuff there. Um, so we got a question in the chat that's sort of related to this, but um, how is NIL different from state to state? That's a really good question. And I think a lot of the preparation was around there being some overarching rules that would apply to every institution. And I think in response to the Austin case, the NCAA had decided to leave it up to the institutions to build their own um, NIL plans. And those that had laws at the state level would still have to obviously follow their, their state institutions, but that's how NIL can look different from institution to institution and really state to state. Um, by putting the onus on the institution to decide how they wanna handle NIL. Um, for those that didn't have that law, they are able to make rules and assist with, within their, the boundaries set. But it, it's, it's important to know that NIL looks different in both Michigan and North Carolina and really almost every state. So um, when you're building an NIL plan, it's important to make sure that if you have a state law, that your, your institutional policy abides by those state laws and then think of the other things that are within your institution that you want to make sure that you're protected from. Um, so that is a great question. That is how NIL can look different from state to state. Um, so appreciate y'all. 
So one thing that I've seen a lot of over the past few months and even the past few weeks is institutions actually adding positions related to NIL and adding staff members. Nate even said on, on the call here earlier that his title is now going to include NIL at some point. Some institutions are also adding positions to handle NIL education and all of the different facets. It's such a unique um, prospect. So Nate, can you talk a little bit about how y'all are tackling that and how if you've added any folks or how you are building out that NIL plan? Yeah, so <clears throat> right now um, we have hired um, a specific individual to handle NIL and, and that individual um, is going to, you know, works under me and, and, and what they're going to focus on is really that outreach portion. So, um, you know, one of the things we've, we focused on, and, and this is a way that we can empower our community, um, is to reach out to small businesses here in, in Chapel Hill and reach out to the Chamber of Commerce and make sure that they understand, hey, look, here's the rules with NIL. Here's here's what you can do, here's how you can engage with student athletes um, in the right way, right? Because one of the things we wanna make sure is that everyone's doing this the right way and we're not jeopardizing anybody's eligibility. And the way to do that is through information, right? Is through education and information uh, provision. So uh, one of the things this, this new position will do um, is, is kind of go out in the community and make sure everyone's educated, make sure their, their answers are, uh, or their questions are answered. And then make sure everyone's comfortable with it. I mean, one of the things I'm sure uh, Sydney has seen this and everybody, you know, the compliance people that are on this call, um, you know, I get calls every day from businesses saying, are you sure I can do this? Are you really sure I can do this? I'm not quite sure I feel comfortable doing this NIL deal. And, uh, you know, we really just have to... Uh, confirm with them and, and hold their hand through the process and make sure that they understand, yes, we can do this now. This is a new space that we're in and, and we're okay to do that. So um, we wanna make sure we have somebody in that role that can deal with those kinds of questions um, on a daily basis. Obviously in compliance, we have tons of other issues going on. And so, um, you know, I can look at it from a 10,000 foot view, but we want somebody to be in it in the weeds every day. And so that person is gonna do that. Uh, the other thing they're gonna do is, is make sure that we provide specific education targeted to student athletes uh, on what they want. So an example of this is last night. Um, so Kara Conazario is that person. Uh, she formerly worked in, in lacrosse for us, um, but she was at our, our, our weekly or our monthly SAC meeting. And, and she was getting feedback from student athletes on what they want from us as far as the NIL world. So, so what kind of resources can we provide you to help benefit you more, right? So one of the things we're doing is bringing in speakers and one of them is a tax expert to give them tax advice. That was one thing that we heard from student athletes that they're really concerned with uh, when April comes around and the taxes involved with NIL work. And so um, now that's fine, right? Having a tax expert up there, but they're going to spit out some information that no one's going to understand. And it's going to you know, sound like a foreign language to a lot of people. And so what we wanted to do and what Kara did a great job of was making sure that we said, what specific questions do you want answered, right? So we want to help and, and, and try to get as specific as possible for our student athletes. And so that person um, being able to do that and engage with our student athletes on a daily, weekly basis to make sure that we're providing, you know, to Sydney's point, we want to provide the maximum amount of, of benefits and, and effort to our student athletes as we possibly can. And the only way to do that is to know what they want. And so um, if I, you know, I can give them a bunch of stuff that they don't care about, and that doesn't help anybody, but if we get them what they want. And so th that's really been helpful. I, as far as the expansion of beyond that, um, I think we'll, you know, time will tell, we'll see where this goes. We'll see where the, you know, where our holes are, where we need to fill them. Um, as far as, you know, uh, picking up slack, we, we recently, um, had a financial aid uh, individual leave our office, but they were overseeing kind of the disclosure piece of it um, through Compass. Um, and so now maybe that's a whole new role that we're going to have so that we have somebody that's, you know, overseeing the disclosure process and that. So we'll see how it goes in this first year. We're kind of a wait and see uh, right now as far as expanding the NIL office, um, but it's something we're looking at. Awesome. Awesome. Sydney, same to y'all. How are y'all tackling uh, staffing NIL? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm a perfect example. My role did not exist <laughs> a couple months ago. Um, and I was brought on specifically to work with student athletes in terms of branding, um, helping them with education resources um, when it comes to branding and NIL. Um, so I feel like Michigan is, to Nathan's point, they are looking to expand. We're waiting to see what holes that need to be plugged. I feel like people's roles are, alt are ultimately July 1st have been shifted and changing and seeing, you know, how that's going to affect their workload. Um, do we need to bring someone out who's more boots to the ground? Um, 
in terms of the NIL committee, I'm the one who usually talks to a lot of recruits and to parents. So I kind of have like a player and recruit perspective where, you know, some of my counterpart looks at it from a sponsorship, you know, standpoint because they're dealing with sponsors. So seeing, you know, what areas are we lacking? And I know that's something that we're definitely always talking about and going to grow on to best help our student athletes. Yeah, and we got a great question that relates kind of to this, because personally, I feel like you are one of these, but it says, how do you feel about brand coaches for individual teams and athletic departments? To me, your role in strategic communications is also being that branding coach for your athletes, maybe not called the traditional brand coach or, or what others are, are, are seeing in the industry, but how do you think that that's evolving and how do you feel about uh, the title of brand coach? I mean, I love it. Like I would love to be coach Sims junior, the brand coach. Um, I think that's awesome. I think that it's very important and it's not just for like an NIL space, but what I found before NIL is, you know, having somewhere where, you know, coaches are busy, you know, game planning, you have people that are already like, you know, doing their niche things. So a lot of things on social media or, you know, can fall by the wayside. And we've seen so many, you know, young men and young women miss out on a lot of money and opportunities because of things that they tweeted out or they've posted that have been harmful. So I'm very passionate about making sure that our guys, you know, since I work with football are protected. So, you know, having someone to be like, Hey, you know, if you want to go into law school, let's make sure you have an updated, updated, you know, headshot let's making sure that you know uh when law schools look at you to see if you're the type of candidate you're attracting that market in terms of nil you know we have our offensive line they love to punt and they love to fish lord knows i can't fish but i will be out there helping them you know build their brand getting content for them so they're being you know marketable to a Cabela's or Bath Pro Shop. So putting them in situations of success and having those relationships, those one-on-ones with the team as a brand coach, I think um, gives those players that edge. So I'm all for it. That's what I do. So obviously I'm pro that. <laughs> awesome. And a shameless influencer plug, we actually partner with a company that provides a personality test to every athlete as part of their social media assessment. So that's a great it's a great way to see exactly what you're talking about, how they're being perceived on social based on the language that they're using, based on what they want to accomplish, and they can actually affect change on that. And they know that they, if they are seen as maybe less driven than they'd like to be, they can work towards building on that drive. So love to hear that you're talking about that too. Yes, I definitely need to send that Teamworks out to my players so they can do that. I love that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So um, what are some things that y'all have in the works that you're planning for NIL over the next few months? And Nate, let's start with you. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we got a couple things. Um, you know, I think one of the things nationally that everybody kind of wants um, and I'd like to see happen is the, you know, EA sports game. I think there's a lot of interest in that. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's something that's really neat. Um, certainly jerseys are a thing. I think the global pandemic has put kind of a, uh, the kibosh on a lot of the, the, the supply chain issues that are happening. Um, and so that's why there's not a lot of jerseys out there. Michigan, uh, with the exception of Michigan and Ohio State, I think there's not too many else out there that can do jerseys. So uh, looking into that and trying to get that off the ground. Uh, for now, we're looking at jerseys. So shirt jerseys, trying to do something like that, I think is pretty cool. Um, just, you know, again, we, we want to support our student athletes as much as possible. And so looking at getting those things off, you know, we partnered with the brand art group. And I think that is something that we've really, um, you know, tried to show our student athletes, hey, look, this is a great opportunity for you. And, and if you want to do these big, great things, you know, if you want to have these EA sports games, if you want to do these um, kind of uh, bigger things, that's an avenue for it. And so I think there's some really neat things coming uh, from that group license and from Brandar Group. I know they're working with a lot of schools around the country, um, and I think there's some really neat things coming. Awesome. Sydney, you? Yeah, um, I was just talking before um, the webinar. So for instance, for our football team, we're creating an NIL social media hub. Um, as you saw, I probably had to mute myself and take myself off the video. I'm right in the hot spot. Players just walk in, coaches just walk in. So like my office is theirs. So what we're doing is we're gonna have a little podcast wing. We're going to have um, a station where there's a selfie ring light. Um, so our players can come in and start to do things to build their brand. Um, if they're into broadcasting, have them sit down. We'll have a little like um, 
TV set type studio. So little things where they can create content that will better build their brand. Um, we do lifestyle shoots. So like I said, if our guys are into, you know, outdoor wear, if they're into high fashion, they can go in and create things for their social platforms that will market certain um, brands that they're trying to um, work with. Uh, so that's kind of our big thing and uh, that we're working on in terms of NIL that first pop up to my mind from a branding aspect. Great, great. And we actually have a, uh, a viewer question that would love to for you to expand a little bit on how you're helping athletes build a brand beyond just social media, but how they can brand themselves for, um, you know, life positions uh, and, and kind of who is teaching them the best practices and who's leading this? Yeah, so um, I would definitely say from a football standpoint, I'm taking the charge on, and I team up with our player, director of player development, Chris Bryant, who does an amazing job um, with making sure that we're having up-to-date professional headshots. We're actually just doing that for our student interns today. Um, so making sure that they're up to date. I meet with them multiple times throughout the year, during football season, post football season, um, finding out what are their goals, what are their interests. And we create a social media plan that is geared towards each individual player. So, and it's going to change as they evolve and change as young men. So, you know, one day if they want to be an engineer, we're making sure that um, they, like I said, up to date headshot, their LinkedIn is, you know, professional. We have professionals in that um, area, engineers look at it and be like, okay, this is what we would want in a candidate. Um, so that's things that we're doing from a professional standpoint. Um, making sure at the end of the day from, I say that the best brands they're controlled and they're authentic. So, you know, if you're into community service, we're putting you in situations of success. If you're into fashion, we're putting you in situations of success. Um, so building that strong foundation. So if it's whether it's grad school, it's the NFL, you know, you are better than when you came in. And it might be me calling and I will call if I see a tweet that I think is going to hinder you and tell you to take it down, you know? So it's playing good cop, bad cop and, you know, putting them in those situations of success. Thank you, that, that was amazing. <laughs> um, Nate, this might, um, this might be a, a, a tough question to answer because we don't have any mental health professionals on here, but what are your thoughts on NIL when it comes to mental health and some good and bad things that have come of that. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a, a subject uh, that hasn't gotten enough uh, attention in, in, in this space. I mean, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen the mental health issues kind of uh, climb the scale of attention um, in our world and sports in general, um, which is always, which is a good thing. Um, but I think no one's really talking about mental health and NIL yet. Uh, but I think that is around the corner. And I think it's something that's Im imperative that we do. Um, the pressure that's going to be on them. I mean, to Sydney's point, you know, one tweet could send you, you know, down a spiral um, into, um, you know, a bad situation where you lose sponsors, you lose friends, you lose family members because of one tweet. And I think that impact on your mental health uh, is incalculable. And so it's going to have an impact. Um, you know, I, I don't want to call out individual athletes, but my guess is Spencer Rattler probably needs some mental health coaches right now. And that's not a knock on him. I'm just saying from going from Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback, NIL superstar to being benched and not being made available for media, that's a pretty big fall for a kid that's 19, 20 years old. And so I think, you know, the mental health of this is going to be uh, really important. Locker rooms, right? I'm best player on the team. I scored the most goals in women's soccer today. Um, but girl at the end of the bench is making $50,000 a year in NIL. What am I doing wrong, right? How am I, how does that affect my mental image? How does that affect my, my uh, you know, self-image of, of, of what I am? You know, what, what am I about? And so I think those things are certainly important. Um, and we have, um, you know, we partner, Jenny Shannon is, is great. Um, and she's here providing mental health services to our uh, student athletes. And, and, and I think ingratiating her into the process, making sure student athletes know that this is your resource, that, you know, this is a, this is a may, not, not a must, 
right? I think that's the other thing that's really important is this NIL opportunity is here and we keep on seeing opportunity. That doesn't mean that you have to take advantage of it. And so if you are a student athlete who's struggling with that, there's no reason why you have to do NIL. Um, and I think it's important to kind of tell kids, you know, tell student athletes that is, you know, we want you to do it. Here's the resources. We're going to help you go as far as we, as you want to go. But if you don't, that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. We're not going to push you um, you know, out that door if, if you don't want to go and, and, and just making sure that we're keeping track on that. Um, I think that's going to be a huge deal in the future and, and something that um, we definitely have to pay attention to. Definitely. Uh, athletes are just facing an immense amount of pressure. This adds to it, though there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of benefits to NIL, but knowing that there is all this pressure from all these different angles, it's important that they have resources and that they understand that. Um, Sydney, anything to add on, on mental health? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with the um, standpoint that it can definitely, you know, NIL and social media can play a part in mental health and it can bleed into the locker room and, you know, it's okay to put the phone down and to get help. I know we saw it last year with COVID. Um, I saw it a lot at Notre Dame, especially with our um, students of color with the social injustice. Um, I know as someone who was reading those comments, it was traumatizing too. And I had to seek help um, from social media. So I can only imagine the players in which they are attacking, um, how they dealt with it. So I think it is very important and to have resources. And I'm very fortunate um, to have been at two institutions that have really good, um, a really good support psychology program and resources available to students and student athletes. And I make sure that I let them know. And um, just from a day-to-day -day standpoint, as you, you know, see people like to pop in and out of my office, I have an open door policy, making sure that, you know, people know that there's a safe space within that, you know, Schimbeckler Hall or wherever it may be that they can come to and talk to about different issues. Like I said, I'm not a, you know, trained professional, but sometimes it's okay to have someone here to, you know, you can kind of vent to and have honest and open conversations. But yeah, I can definitely see it, especially, you know, with body image issues for our, you know, our male and female athletes, like you said, you know, why does this person have a million TikTok followers and I'm doing the same thing and I don't have nearly a fraction of that. Those are things that we've seen issues with and that we're dealing with, but luckily with um, the resources that we have, I feel like our student athletes know that they can go somewhere. And the biggest part and the biggest issue I've seen with our guys is, you know, kind of taking that first step to seek help. Um, but paying attention to those signs is someone, you know, a little more standoffish. Do you see that them a little down and out? Um, but you know, if you if I see a tweet that I can think is concerning, go into that person like, are you good? Are you okay? You know, do we need to take a break? Being very proactive with their mental health. And that's great. That's that's incredible. I can say as a, a former social media manager who was unaffiliated to the account I manage, there were some tweets or responses that ruined my day. And I can only imagine what that's like for, for athletes who, you know, are putting themselves out there and, and competing at the highest level. And everyone with a cell phone can now comment on anything that they do. So um, credit to y'all for having those resources, credit to y'all for prioritizing it. Um, shifting the conversation a little bit. This question is for Sydney. How have you seen a shift in your content, um, game day and otherwise at Michigan to include an emphasis on branding of your student athletes? It's probably like my main focus now. <laughs> is making sure that our guys are being tagged, that they're being represented. I think it's more or less so my content plan is more geared on making sure that they are getting content for their specific social media accounts um, and that we are working very closely with influencer to constantly making sure that we are uploading photos, that we're getting them content for um, their accounts, working with our uh, graphic designer, our photographers, our videographers. Um, it's more geared less on the main account and using the main account to um, support our student athletes with our game day stuff, um, calling attention to their social media accounts. And from what I've seen in my um, with our numbers last year and so far this year is actually helping our main account more by directing attention away from us and to our student athletes. It's coming actually back towards us and we're seeing um, a lot of growth. So, you know, making sure we have all their social media handles and, you know, big play, gra motion graphics, graphics, um, 
every post and, you know, every post on Instagram, making sure that they're being tagged, calling it, you know, direct attention to follow our guy or whatever it may be. Um, it's all geared towards our student athletes and calling attention to their sites. Have y'all seen a shift in how your departments are valuing creatives and, and folks that are, are the content creators out there? Yeah, I would definitely see that there's more of an emphasis on, um, and I think it's a long time coming, creatives add so much to programs. And I think coaches are now seeing that, you know, creatives have such a big role in recruiting um, with the current roster and, you know, fan engagement marketing. And so there's more of a shift in making sure that they are being well represented, that they're being paid. Um, I definitely think there's more long strides to go, but I do see a trend in the right direction. Um, with our creatives and I definitely see that you know coaches are starting to more value the work in which they put in which I think is dope because they deserve it agreed Retweet. <laughs> Nate how about y'all yeah no I mean we've certainly seen the demand for uh creative services skyrocket since July 1 um and, and influencer has been a big part of that because kids are used now to getting their pictures all the time and having access to that content and now they just want more right and so um, what we're seeing now is an uptick in that in that demand and, and um, if we can't meet it I think one of the things we've tried to do is, is say okay here's some resources that you can use on your own here's some people that will go and create these for you whether it's trusted associates or um, you know somebody um, outside the program that does it you know as a um, as a freelancer and we'll put them in contact with that freelancer to make sure that they you know get the the content that they want um, we've also tried to, you know, one of the things uh, we've worked on and Kara has worked on here is try to get a class uh, uh, implemented here at UNC to really focus on exactly that. So how to create content. I mean, we have a couple classes here already. Um, Gary Kay in the, in the School of Journalism um, does a great job on, on marketing and branding, but really focusing on that part of it, on the graphic design, on the content creation. So our student athletes can be empowered to, to do that too and, and not have to hire it out and pay somebody else or wait you know, in line with all the other student athletes, but they can actually uh, do that themselves. And so we've, we've, we've done that. Um, you know, we're next week, I think we have a session. We're going to um, show all of our student athletes how to um, uh, scrub photos uh, through Photoshop. So they have access to Photoshop and we're going to teach them how to scrub photos of marks and logos. So they're able to use um, pictures of them and, and, and a way to do it um, so that they don't, you know, uh, incur uh, university licensing issues. And so I think that demand, and I think that was one of the things, you know, we wanted um, student athletes asked us, hey, we want this, right? We, we want this education. We want to be able to do this ourselves. And so we've, we've met that, um, um, that request. And, and I think it's going to be great for our student athletes. The Sydney's point, um, you know, the demand is there. And I think we have to meet it um, in any way we can, um, because uh, that's, that's the future. So what, from what I'm hearing, it's hug a creative today. Go find someone on your creative staff, give them a big old hug. Yes. Um, they're already overworked with all the recruiting stuff. And so now this is just, um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of work to be done. I see Kevin commented, said, that's right, hug a creative. King, I love you. That's, that's <laughs> my guy right there. <laughs> so here's a, another question related to that. So how would your athletic department feel about giving students in creative schools, fine arts, communications, et cetera, uh, internships to work with these student athletes to for content creation. We're doing okay. that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so how so oh, going back to NIL as a whole, how has it benefited your athletes today? Like how ha over the first couple months, what are some benefits that you've seen that maybe we weren't thinking about? And we can start with Nate. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think, um, you know, one of the immediate benefits is uh, the engagement. Um, so just being able to engage with student athletes and figure out what they want, um, you know, especially in compliance. And I say that from compliance, right? Sydney, she says her, her office is a hub. And I totally believe that in compliance, there's cobwebs on the outside of my door. Nobody comes and sees me. So being able to engage with student athletes, I think was great. And, and, and being able to show them like, hey, um, you know, yeah, we, you know, we're the, you know, uh, 
the bear of bad news sometimes, but not in this space. In this space, you know, we, we want to be helpful. We want to engage with you and we want to make sure that um, we're providing you the resources and the um, and the information and the education that you need to be successful. And, and student athletes have reacted in a positive way to that. And it's been great. Uh, one of the first things we did was um, during the summertime, uh, we sat over in football training table meal every day at lunch. And um, we set up a laptop, a little sign, and we said, hey, um, you know, if you have your NIL questions, come here. Um, and, and sometimes just being able to see um, you know, all of a sudden eyes wide open, I can do what? And, and being able to explain that to a student athlete, I think it has been, a, you know, a really, a really neat experience for me. And, um, you know, we enjoy that. And I think for student athletes, um, um, you know, I, they benefited from it, obviously financially, but I think, you know, overall, they've seen that they can be their own CEO. And I think, you know, Sydney said this earlier, we keep saying it, but the empowerment of the student athlete, right? Um, I think they can, you know, some of the student athletes who, who are working in this NIL space and who get it and who are being successful, they realize, hey, wait a minute, I can be my own boss, right? I can do these things. I, I am, um, you know, the CEO of my own business. And so I think that's a really neat thing. And it's really neat to be able to see uh, student athletes flourish in that space, feel more confident um, in their ability. Um, and that's a really neat thing. So that's kind of the opposite of what we were talking about earlier about the, the negative effects of mental health. It can have an amazingly positive effect on, on mental health as well um, in the right context. And so um, I think that's one of the neat things we've seen from our student athletes. Sydney, what are your thoughts? To, I don't know how to top that because like, yeah, I think that's, you hit it right on the nail. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've seen with our student athletes is them feeling a sense of empowerment and that they have control over their social media, over their brand, over, you know, being their own CEO and navigating that space. And, you know, as they seek help in, you know, whether it be tax implica implications, you know, how to build their social media, how to protect themselves. When you're, when you're seeing them, you know, take charge and be, you know, aggressive and what they want, it's really, really cool to see. And that has been the biggest positive that I've seen is them feeling a sense of empowerment. And like you said, it's more positive um, mental health effect. And so I definitely want to keep that train going and making these student athletes feel empowered and that their hard work is being noticed and that they can then get another benefit and added benefit on their hard work that they do on and off the field. That's great. Great. Um, we have another question. Advice for administrators at um, Division II, Division III NAIA schools, maybe not having the, the staffing resources, but who could take leadership of this and how can they program to benefit their athletes? Yeah, I mean, I'll take this. I, I think a natural fit at the Division II and III level is somebody who already works in professional development. Um, so um, somebody in that space, I think, would be a natural fit to lead the NIL department. I mean, this is what it is, right? It's professional development. Um, and so I think that's a natural fit. I think, um, you know, one of the things I've done, and, and like I said earlier, you know, I've become a, a uh, somewhat of a marketing and IP expert. And before this, I didn't know a lot of that uh, information. I just had to teach myself. And so my advice would be uh, to the division two and three administrator, um, you know, just educate yourself on it, you know, go find the resources online. Um, you know, I'm sure if you go on YouTube and figure out, you know, Photoshop, you could probably figure it out in a couple of clicks maybe, um, but figure out that, you know, those resources um, you know, watch a couple TED Talks on marketing and how that works. Watch a couple TED Talks on social media. Uh, subscribe to Influencer and get the videos that they have, the educational videos, um, so that you can watch those and educate yourselves. And I, I think without going out and buying all these, you know, resources or hiring a whole new person, um, I think you can do a lot just by educating yourself. And, and yeah, we all know, you know, everyone wears two hats a lot of times and division two and three, you probably wear five or six hats. Right. Um, but one more hat I think would be helpful. Um, and, and your student athletes will appreciate it. Now, there's no question your student athletes will respond positively, um, to you educating yourself so that you can educate them and bring them more resources. So that's what I would suggest. I would also lean on interns. Um, I think there are a lot of very young, bright people who will very bright young people, let's say that, right? Uh, very bright young people um, looking to get in the industry um, and especially to, to, to kind of um, mix these two worlds, sports and um, graphic design and, and social media and marketing and branding. I think that's, you know, um, a, a, a great opportunity um, for someone who's looking to get into the industry. 
and you could get them as an intern, um, you know, uh, pay them maybe grad school, you know, that, that you could get away with, you know, maybe just paying them for grad school or something like that. Um, and it would be a great opportunity and you wouldn't really have to spend a lot of resources in that area, but you would still get a great person who's trying to make a portfolio for themselves. And so they're going to work really hard because they want the next job. And so uh, that would be my advice to you. Yeah. And just to add to that, I mean, I would find someone on your staff that is passionate about this and is interested in, in someone you can empower. Because when I was at Texas, this was something I was very interested in. It was something that I wanted to do. And they let me and empowered me to do it. And now it led to my career here at Influencer. I'm able to work with so many different partners and help them find the same people and find the same way to benefit their athletes. So I would, I would see who on your staff is passionate about this and who's interested and who's and just like Nate said, interns, this is a whole new era. This is a whole new um, realm. And so many people are adding new staff members, but who, how many years of experience can you have in NIL when you are only working in it for a few months? So think about as an intern or as a student, something that you can dive into, and there's probably going to be a career waiting at the end when you graduate. Such a great point. All right. Sydney, you probably have some experience with this, but what do you think, or do you anticipate locker room tension caused by certain members of teams making more money than others? Um, I know that's been a major concern at both institutions that I've been at is keeping the locker room peace um, and tensions at bay. I think like with any locker room, there might be you know, certain things that arise, but overall, I think that like it boils down to the culture of the program and to the team and what's expected. And when you have that strong foundation of, you know, brotherhood or sisterhood um, and the toleration of coaches, whether, you know, are we pitting players against each other or not, that like bleeds into other things as well. Um, so I think it boils down to the culture of that institution and that team and um, the expectations of NIL and how that's going to impact playing time and stuff like that. So I think once again, it just culture is the big thing. I haven't seen any issues. I'm um, at the two schools that I've been at. We're very hyper cautious of it just in case. Um, we've been both coaches that I've worked with have been very hyper cautious to make sure that doesn't bleed into the room. And that's why I don't think there hasn't been um, any issues at the two schools that I've been at. I think we've also seen a ton of um, athletes in leadership positions yes. helping their team and doing things to benefit the rest of their team, not, not just deals for themselves, but benefiting the folks that are supporting them. So I, I love seeing that. I think that that is another uh, benefit of NIL is you're really seeing a lot of leaders and you're seeing a lot of people emerge that understand that they can't get there by themselves and they're helping the folks that help get them to that point. Um, so I love seeing that. Uh, another question here, how does NIL impact recruiting for high school athletes? Yeah, that's the wild, wild west right there. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I think it depends on different people's approaches um, and the expectation of that recruit and the expectations that coaches are letting the recruit. Um, I've seen some schools um, say, hey, like, you're, we're going to get you $100,000 if you come here. And I've seen other schools be like, well, they say $100,000, we're going to give you $200,000, as legal or not legal as that is. Um, it's creating an expectation personally that I think, you know, God forbid that student athlete gets hurt, they might not be worth that. Or if they don't pour into their social media or to their branding might not be worth that. Um, so my approach with it is, you know, we are here to give you a strong education and we want you to leave better than when you came in and we want your brand to be better than when it came in so making sure that you have all the resources available and this is what we can do this is Michigan's special niche you know UNC has their special niche um, and tapping into that um, I know a lot of high schoolers have been you know reaching out about what deals can they do before they even get there well it doesn't fall so much on us but each state's high school you know federation Will you be ineligible to play? Those are things that, you know, Nathan, you could probably talk more about that we found issue with. You know, we can help you start, you know, you can help start building your brand, 
but the deals, you know, from a high school level that might impact your eligibility to play, you know, your senior or junior year. So those are all things that, you know, from a high school level, I've seen issues arise and pop up um, with different recruits and kind of the expectation that these young men and women have on NIL um, being a freshman, you know, entering a college base. Love having my compliance NIL expert here too, because I'm sure Nate has a lot to say about this yeah. as well. Yeah, no, um, I don't actually I have no comment at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I think, um, you know, first, you know, as Cindy mentioned, um, you know, each state has their own uh, high school athletic association rules. Most of them, I think Georgia and maybe a couple other have nixed their NIL prohibitions, but most states have continued to hold on to those prohibitions. We'll see how long those actually hold out and if they continue to have those prohibitions. Um, and I'll say, you know, um, football may be the one that's most impacted, right? Because at, at the, at, at least at the no offense to anybody, but at least at the UNC Michigan level, a lot of our student athletes don't play high school sports. They'll play for their club team or they'll play for a travel baseball team or something like that, that don't have the same high school athletic association prohibition. So if I'm a field hockey player and I, or a lacrosse player and I play for a club team in my city, um, high school athletic association doesn't really have a bearing on me. So those athletes will be able to, you know, potentially garner money. We're seeing it already in the basketball world. Um, there's been a couple of players that have gone to, to high schools outside of their own state, decided to sign NIL deals because they don't play high school basketball. They play AU basketball and other things. And so um, that's certainly one of the trends I think we see, and, and it'll affect football more than anything, just because they still, the place to play football is still in high school. And so it'll, you know, um, kind of affect football more than anything else. I think where we're seeing, um, you know, recruiting come in is um, coaches want to be able to tout current student athletes and what we're doing there. And, and the way that we've approached it and what I've been telling coaches is the way we need to approach NIL in the recruiting space is no different than the way we would approach our academic program, right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to tell you how amazing our academic folks are, how amazing our tutors are, how many tutors we, we, we hire each night to come and tutor our guys in specific classes. Um, I'm going to tell you about the expertise, you know, the 200 years of collective knowledge that our counselor, academic counselors have about the laptops that we get you about all these different things that we have in the academic world. Um, and we do that in recruiting and we can do that in recruiting and everybody does it. Um, you know, I've worked at Michigan. I know academics is, is a huge deal and you guys have a great academic program there. Um, and so you guys use that in recruiting. And I think that's what we've been telling coaches in the space is use NIL in the same way saying, look, these are the resources, you know, we have, we partner with the Chamber of Commerce. We partnered with Carolina Student Legal Services to provide free legal services to our student athletes. We partnered with, um, you know, the Leadership Academy here on campus. We partnered with the School of Journalism and the Keenan Flagler School to get um, accelerators going, you know, um, and so all, all of these different things. So here's our resources. This is what we're doing for our student athletes. If you want to come to UNC, these things will be available to you as well. And so no different than facilities or academics or any other kind of programming that we have. I think that's where you'll see the focus on recruiting. Obviously, for you know NCAA compliance reasons, we can't offer a student athlete the hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollar deals. We can't say, "Hey, you you get a hundred thousand dollars." But what I can say is, um, you know, our student athletes here have all of these resources available to them, um, and if you come here, um, you will have these resources available to you as well. So no different than the ASBSA or anything else. Facilities, right? You know, Clemson's got a golf course or whatever on their campus. Hey, you can come play mini golf anytime you want, right? So that, that no different than that. Hey, if you come here, you know, we partner with Wells Fargo to provide financial literacy every year um, to our student athletes so that they understand we have tax advisors come and provide tax advice. And so that's kind of how I think um, the best way to use it in recruiting. I totally right. agree with that point. I totally agree with that. I do think that something is going to happen. There might be, you know, a promise is being made or something comes out. Um, that is going to regulate that, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, to your point, I definitely agree. Like it needs to be about, you know, what resources we have available, what you can get and past the, you know, four years, what are the next 40 years going to look like for you branding, you know, wise. Um, so because NIL is just that four or five, you know, year period, we're going to take that and then we're going to grow off of that for the next 40 years. And I think that's what's important rather than numbers. So I do. I love that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just, I'm going to repeat Mac here. This is Mac's um, favorite line is 
when you make a decision it's to, to come to UNC, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. And I think to that point, that's what we want to make sure our student athletes understand is we're here to help build your brand all the way through your life. And so yep. um, what you do here in this four years is very important, but it will carry on. And, and that's what we're most focused on. Awesome. So I think we only have a few minutes left. I want to give y'all both a chance to offer any closing pieces of advice that you would give to folks looking to improve NIL on their campuses or what to look for. So um, Nate, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so um, I, I think my piece of advice would be to listen to your student athletes, um, you know, find out what they want. Um, again, you know, we've been talking about this. Some student athletes are going to engage in this space, some don't, and some want to be hyper focused in this space. And so we, we want to know, you know, what resources our student athletes are looking for. Um, and so I think the, you know, the first thing to do is, is to find out from them uh, what they're looking for. Do they want help in Photoshop? Do they want legal advice? Um, do they want you to stay out of their business? You know, what, what is it that they want in NIL? Because we want to be able to provide that to them just like anything else. I think secondly, it is uh, to be flexible. So uh, to Sydney's point, you know, something may happen down the road that will change this and it will, it's inevitable. Um, you know, we had three changes in a week and right before July 1st. So um, I think flexibility is going to be key in this space for the next year, two years, three years down the road, it's going to change, it's going to look different. Um, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that's, that's going to, you know, look different is the the, the cohesion between the student athlete and the university. Um, so how much involvement can a university have with that student athlete? That's going to change over time. And so you're just going to have to be flexible. Uh, don't build a rigid policy because um, it's just not going to be helpful for you. Try to build some flexibility in there because things are going to change and you just have to be willing to roll with the punches. Awesome. Sydney? Um, yeah, I would definitely say keep it, you know, student athlete centric focused. Um, you know, making sure that you're tuned into what they want, what they don't want, keeping a finger on the pulse of what is going to best help all the student athletes that, you know, not just the football team or the basketball team, but help all the student athletes um, equally the same. And, you know, leaning in, I would say, on this younger generation of interns, like my intern, Ron, Seaver, and Jake are so invaluable to me, and I love them so much because they give me a different perspective um, from, you know, being a younger generation and what, you know, is expected. And they go to class with these guys every day. They know what brands they like, what brands they don't like. And so I just would say definitely keeping it about the student athletes, being flexible in your, you know, plan and going with the flow and involving. It's okay. This is fluid. It's brand new. It's never been a thing. So, you know, our strategy this year is going to probably be different than next year. So being okay to evolve and grow and not being so locked in on this is the way it's always been and this is our tradition or whatever it is it's evolving to the here and now and our student athletes and doing whatever it is to put the put them in the best foot forward you know because at the end of the day we want this to impact them for the rest of their lives set them up for success to the next 40 years Great. And my piece of advice would be to make sure that you're involving a group of people that have different beliefs, different backgrounds, different yes. expertise to understand all of the different facets. I think, you know, student services, creative, compliance, these are all different areas, mental health, sports psychology, these are all different areas that have an impact here and that can be beneficial. So make sure that you're including everyone in this process um, and, and doing so in a way that is in benefit of your athletes. And, and like they both said, make sure your athletes are at the heart of it and that they're involved in the process to talk to SAC, talk to some leaders on campus. What do they need? How can you help bring that to them? So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Tracy at hashtag uh, to close us out. Thank you all so much. Um, once again, this was absolutely perfect today. We really appreciate you all um, with your expertise, giving us an hour of your time to talk about this topic. We had a lot of great questions in the chat. Um, didn't quite to get, get to all of them, but we got to quite a few of them and we really appreciate you once again. So thank you, Mark, Sydney, and Nate. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, as a reminder, Hashtag Sports is all about educating and empowering the sports industry. With that being said, we do have an event on Tuesday, October 19th, centered around purpose in sports. So feel free to join us there on our virtual platform. Um, 
as registrations are still open. Uh, last little short funny, we did see that Becky Lewis's invite got shared with quite a few people today. So if you weren't able to change your name or just drop your name in the chat, it's all good. Uh, we'll figure out who the real Becky Lewis is some way down the road. But we really appreciate you all today. Um, enjoy the rest of your Thursday and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all.